Hey, and welcome to the fourth video in the video series of First Step Tutorial with PTV Visa. In this video, I'm going to show you where the demand is stored and how we can play with the demand. So let's just start. Till now, we added a new link and we saw how the assignment results change when we change the, uh, when we change the network parameters. So in this, uh, till now, in our model, we also have the demand incorporated and the demand is stored inside the matrices. If you see again in this windows, which is showing all of the network objects, there is another uh, option here, which is labeled as matrices. So I'm going to go inside here and I have opened the tree till the last part. So inside the all matrices, we see the demand matrices and inside the demand matrices is the zone matrices, which are further divided into the car and public transport matrices separately. So now I'm going to open one of these matrices. For example, I am going to open the car matrix and this has opened here. I will just uh, drag it a little bit up so I can see both of my windows simultaneously. Um, so in this matrix, uh, this is showing the demand between the zones. So between each zone, we know how many cars are going from which zone to which zone. So for example, if I select randomly any one of this demand, which is this one, I will see that from zone number 50 to zone number 110, 10.3 uh, cars are going, which is uh, at a later stage rounded up or down. So uh, it is also these two windows are also synchronized. So I, if I select any of the cell entries here, it will also be highlighted in the network editor window on the top that you can see. We can also modify or change these cell entries if we have a better data available or if we want to test the results based on some different analysis. So that is also possible. And uh, in order to view our total number of matrices inside the model, it is also possible that we go back to the lists in, in the top bar and in the OD demand data, that is uh, uh, the menu here, in the sub menu, we can see the matrices here. So we can if just click on this option, we will be shown the total number of matrices that are stored inside the model. In this case, because it is a very simple model, we only have two matrices, but when we are going towards more complex models, this is a very useful tool to use. Moreover, what we can do with the matrix editor is if uh, we can go back to editing the cell entry. So for example, I will put this as 20 here. Let's see, so this one is now updated. We can also uh, turn off the synchronization if for some reason we don't want that, which is done using these two buttons. If you want the synchronization to be turned on, you can use this button, which is uh, the red one, which is turning it on, and the gray one is turning it off. We can also perform a multiple, op multiple number of operations on these matrices, which are all available here. You can see that uh, we can initialize the matrix to a certain value. We can uh, perform all of the other operations on this matrix window as well. We can also, if we have a matrix available outside, which we want to read inside Wisdom, that is also possible using these uh, options here. Uh, in this option, which is uh, the list view of the matrix, this helps us, for example, uh, this is the list view, and if I also drag it up a little bit, we can set it based on the ascending or descending order, which is already set at this point. So we need to set it, for example, based on the ascending order or based on the descending order, and this gives us an idea of uh, the highest OD, uh, the OD pairs with the highest demand. So for example, in this uh, matrix here, we can see that these ones, the internal demand of these matrices is the highest. Okay, so uh, this is it for this video. And if you want to also know what we can go with, do with the graphic parameters, please turn on the next video. Thanks a lot.